Hey guys, welcome back on Sweet from Back Binge Code. It's been a long time I've created my last video. Uh, anyway, a personal update. It's been almost eight months I've been doing a front-end developer job, and while doing this job, I've realized the importance of optimization in React. There are a lot of videos on YouTube which talk about the basics of React, right? So in this video, I'll go through three examples and I'll show you how you can reduce the renders of the components using Memo, Use Memo, and Use Callback. So this will be an advanced level video, and I, I hope you will learn something new about React from this video. Jimbo, let's do this thing. So we are gonna see total three examples. One is different states, different callbacks. Second is shared state, different callbacks. The third is shared state, shared callbacks. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is my first example. That first app is total two states. One is education and the other one is city. And both the states are initialized with the empty string. And then I have this handle change city to change the city. And then this handle change education to change the education. Cool. And then inside the return, I have total three components. Two are the inputs and one is the no props. Look at the input component first. Okay, so uh, first of all, notice that I have this console log inside the use effect without the dependency array. It is there to check if the component renders or not. Okay, and the same is happening inside the no props component. Cool. So look at the input component. We are getting total three properties: value, handle change, and field name. Value is a string type, handle change is a function type, and field name is a string type. And this is like the lame and controlled input. Input is getting the value and pass the value as value. One change we are getting the event and passing the event or target or value to the handle change function, and that ultimately changes the city. Okay, and then I have this placeholder which is enter field name. So if the field name is passes city, this will be enter city. If the field name is passes education, this will be enter education. As simple as that. And then I am rendering this input components which is getting the value, handle change, and field name respectively. Okay, and also notice the no props component. This is getting no props. Okay. So this is just a dummy component. I am a dummy component which is getting no props. Cool. Uh, fine. Okay, so let's see what happens when this example one component mounts for the first time. Cool. And this example one is being rendered inside this app.jsx file. Let's go to app.jsx and this would be example one. Let's save this. Use effect is not defined. Let's import use effect. Cool. So enter city, enter education, and this is I am the dummy component which gets no props. Cool. So let's see what happens when the example one component mounts for the first time. So refresh the page. Look at this. City renders, education renders, and no props renders. And this is really basic of React, right? So the basics of React is when the parent component renders, all the child components will be re-rendered. Now, let me just clear the console and type something in the city city input. Let's say K O L. Look at this. City renders three times, education renders three times, and no props renders three times. And this is an optimization issue, right? Why should the no props should be re-rendered when it is getting no props? And apart from that, this education input component should also not re-render because I'm not changing anything inside the education component, right? Just think about a form which has around ten fields, and if you change one field, all the ten fields will be re-rendered, which is an optimization issue. So let's solve that. But before that, let's see what is happening. So the basics of React is if the state is present in the parent component, and if you change the state, all the child components. Will be re-rendered no matter if the child component is consuming the state or not. It will always be re-rendered. Okay, so let's solve this. So first of all, let's convert this no props component to pure component. And how? So for that we can use the memo header component. So look at this. I've already imported memo from the app, and we just need to wrap this component with memo. Memo also takes a second argument, which we'll be talking about later. Fine. What memo does? Memo checks the previous properties and current properties, and based on that, it returns a boolean value. And that boolean value checks if the component should be re-rendered or not. In this case, there is no props, right? So it will always be true. I mean, the props are always equal, so it will not be re-rendered. And now also wrap the input component with memo. Fine. Let's save this, and now let's see. Clear the console. Refresh the page. Clear the console. Type something. Look at the city renders and education renders, but the no props component is not re-rendering. It means we have optimized the no props component. Now, why the input component is re-rendering, whereas we are using the memo, right? Now let's see how the memo works internally. Memo will not stop the re-rendering of all those components which are getting the same function type props or object type props, because the memo actually does a shallow comparison. This memo takes an optional second argument as function. The function gets the previous props and the current props as arguments. Which you can use to check if the other props, such as an object, is same or not. 
you need to return a boolean value and that will tell memo that if the components will render or not right so in this case memo can only compare the value and the field name as these are the strings and these are the primitive types right so this can only check if the value and field name is same or not but what about the handle change handle change is a function right and look at this what we are getting inside this handle change we are getting the handle change education and this is a callback function now react will always create a new callback function every time this example component re-renders and when this example component re-renders every time you change any of the state so in this case you are changing the city first so the city is changed the example component re-renders and these two functions are also recreated and as these functions are also recreated this will create the new reference so this memo header component will always get a new reference so that's why memo thinks that the props are changing and as the props are changing it will always be re-rendered so the point is we need to tell react that hey don't create the handle change education function until and unless i don't change the education and for that we need to use the use callback let's import the use callback cool and wrap the handle change education using the use callback cool it also takes a dependency array and this dependency array will tell react if the function should be recreated or not so in this case this will be education so if the education does change then only create the handle change education save this let's say refresh the page or clear the console type something in the city and look at this only city renders right now if we just go to education city and education both will be rendered because this handle change city is not wrapped with the use callback so let's also wrap this with the use callback fine inside dependency area just pass city cool and now if we just go to education and type something only education will be re-rendered if we just go to city and type something on the city will be re-rendered so it means we have optimized the whole code snippet okay so i hope you have learned the concept of memo and use callbacks this is really the fundamental topics of react optimization cool let's see the second example here it is so the second example is shared state and defined callbacks okay so let's look at the code snippet first okay so first of all i have this field state which is getting the city and education inside an object and then i have this handle change city which is a changing the city and then i have this handle change education which is changing the education and then inside this same input component i'm passing the fields of city handle change city and city as the props and then inside second input i'm passing the fields of education handle change education and the education as props cool let's see what happens if I just go to a city and type something, city and education both will be re-rendered, right? And that is the basics of React I told you. So let's optimize this. So first of all, just wrap the input with memo. We don't need to pass any second argument because that's my use case here. And then just wrap the callbacks with the use callbacks. Use callbacks. Cool. I'm leaving the dependency area empty as of now. Fine. So what should I pass in the dependency array? Now as the dependency array is empty, this function will be only created when the component is mount. It will not be created next time, right? In that case, it will not give me the proper behavior. So how can I tell React that only create the function whenever a particular field is changed? This is really simple as we have already covered the concept. So in this case, this will be fields.ct. Handle change education, this should be fields.education, right? Right, so in this case, this will be optimized. So just go to city and type something, only city renders. Go to education and type something, only education renders. But I've given this example to show you a different way to solve this problem. And that is, we are gonna memoize the individual field and then we'll pass the memoized value wherever it is needed. Seems confusing, let's see. So how we can memoize the value in the parent component? So for that, we can use the use memo hook. Just import the use memo hook. So the idea is, we are going to create the memoize city and memoize education. So use memo, use memo takes a callback that will return the fields.ct only when the fields.ct is changed. And same for the memoize education. Education. And now instead of fields.ct, we are going to pass the memoize city at both the places inside the dependency array and also inside this input component where we are passing as the props so this will be memoize city and then this fields dot education will be memoize education this is much cleaner right 
Well, let's save this and look at this. Let's go to city and change something. Only city re renders. Let's go to education and change something. Only education re renders. Okay, this, so this is another way to solve this problem. However, there's another way to solve this problem and that is much more cleaner and I would recommend you to use that whenever it's possible. But we'll see that after the third example. So let's see the third example. So in the third example, we are going to see shared state and shared callback. Now, why is this needed? So let me just give you a use case here. So think about a form which is not static but dynamic. And all the input fields of the form is coming from the config. It might be from the back end or in CDN. But the thing is, the config will give you certain keys and based on the keys, you need to create a form. Now think about a scenario where you need to create a survey form and all the fields inside the survey form will be decided by your product team or marketing team. In that case, you need to render a form dynamically, right? That might contain the city or education or, you know, some pin code or whatever. So that's a really nice use case we are covering here. Let's see how it is working. So first of all, I have this field keys, which is a city and education. And think about this field keys is coming from the backend. And then I have this create initial state that will simply create a object. And inside that object, I'll put every key and every key will be initialized with this empty string. And then inside the example three component, look at this, I have this field state, which is just calling this create initial state on the first time. And that will just create a simple shape just like this. City, empty string, education, empty string. And then I have this handle form change, which is a shared callback. Uh, this is already wrapped with the use callback. So let me just remove this for no confusion. This handle form change is getting the field name and the value. And based on the field name, it is just dynamically setting the field name. And also look at this, we are, sp we are spreading the fields first. Next thing is inside the input component, we are passing the props. So the first prop will be fields.ct, right? Because field key is zero is ct. And fields.ct will be this empty string. And then if you update the string, this will be the updated value. And then handle form change is the shared callback function, which I talked about. And then the field name is field is zero. And also the same thing is happening inside the second input component. The first is for city and the second is for education. Fine. So if we just change the city, the city and education both will be re-rendered, right? Uh, city and education both are re-rendering, but there is some issue. And that is why I can see the value. Let's go to handle form change is getting the field name and value and here I'm passing the field name. Oh, look at this. The handle change should be getting two arguments, right? But we are only sending one argument. I should have used TypeScript. <laughs> okay, so this will be field name and event.target.value. Now let's see. Cool, cool. So let's come back to a point. CT and education both are re-rendering. So how we can solve this? Well, absolutely obvious that this is re-rendering because this handle change function. But I don't know, every time I start creating a video, all the disturbance comes along my way. Like, kutta bhaagne lag jata hai, baris hone lagta hai, koi bulata hai, paros wale jhagarne lag jata hai. Anyway, uh, first of all, let's wrap this handle form change with the use callback. So wrap this with use callback. Now the problem is, what should I pass in the dependency array? Look, if I pass an empty dependency array, it means this function will be created only once. So in that case, I'll not get the expected behavior, right? So let's see. Let's go to city and type Kolkata. Look, only city renders. However, let's go to education and type something. Their city is removed because when the handle form change is created, the fields is empty object. So let me just lock the fields. The fields is empty object, right? And then we are spreading the fields. So it means we are spreading the empty object first and then we are setting the field name. In that case, it will forcefully update any of this value, either city or education, to an empty string. Let me just show you again. So refresh the page, go to city and type something, Kolkata. Look at this. Look at this inside the fields, city and education both are empty string. So we are just spreading the empty object here first and then setting the field name. And now if I just go to education, look at this. Also, this time, we are not persisting the values, right? So how can we solve this? The obvious way to solve this, create the callback function. Every time the fields of city and fields of education is recreated, I mean changed. So fields dot city and fields dot education. So now just save this and refresh the page. Kolkata education is MBA. But the problem with this is 
Second, education board will be re-tendered, right? So what's the point of optimization here? So we need to find a defined domain. So for that, let's go to the basics of React. And the basics of React is we can actually pass a callback form inside the set function. Or I should say inside the set state function. And that is what we are going to use here. So first of all, just remove this dependency array. So it means create the function only when the component did mount. But in terms of setting the state, don't spread the fields. We are going to spread the previous fields. So just pass a callback type. So this is previous fields. So no matter what, the set state will always get the updated fields. So first of all, just spread the previous fields and then update the value. So it means I don't care about the creation of this handle from change function because I'll always get the updated value from the set fields as I'm using this callback type. Now let's see, just refresh the page, refresh the page and clear the console, go to city and type Kolkata, look at the city renders, go to education, only education renders. So this is the way we should optimize this component. And now remember I told you that there's a third way to optimize the second example. Let's go back to that. Go to example 2, but before that go to app.gsx and render example 2. And here, we are using the memoize value, right? Do we really need to use it? No, because we can just tell React that, hey, create the functions only when the component mounts for the first time and then just pass the callback form in the set state function, right? Okay, so let's do it. Just comment out these values. Just remove this memoize city from the dependency array, remove the memoize education from the dependency array. The memoize city does not exist, so just pass fields.city. Also memoize education, just remove this and pass fields.education. Lovely. And now, inside the set fields function, let's use the callback form. Previous fields, let's return an object, spread the previous fields, and then set the value, I mean set the city. Also just copy this. And in case of handle change education, this will be education. Beautiful. Save this and let's see. Go to city, type Kolkata, only Kolkata re renders. I mean, only city re renders. Kolkata re renders. Go to education and type MBA, only education re renders. Okay, so that's it. If the video makes sense, please hit the like button. If the channel makes sense, please hit the subscribe button. Oh, uh, yeah. If you are new to this channel, I make videos on web development and web designing. So if it somehow sounds interesting, please hit the like button. Cool. So see you in the next video. Bye.